G'day nerds, let's talk about discrete and continuous data. Uh, by the end of this, you want to be able to identify pretty much all the different types of data that you could need or you could get from an experiment and how to what, what would be an appropriate graph to use for that data. Here's your vocabulary if I can just get you to pause the video here and that way you've got these to refer back to as we move forward. Um, I would like to point out though that a data and a datum, uh, datum is the singular, data is the plural. That's kind of interesting. Um, okay, so here we have a flower, right? Flower has six petals, the petals are yellow, the flower is 13 centimeters high, the leaves are dark green, and the plant has two leaves. Um, so with that, what we want to know is what is data? Data is pretty much information that we can collect from our experiments, so I guess that's stuff we can learn. Um, data can be quantitative, which is numerical, so counts, measures, things like that, or data can be qualitative, which are our written observations, visuals, drawings, descriptions, photos, um, all this sort of data which gives a description of something that's qualitative, because it describes the qualities of it. Um, some, qualitative, some qualitative data can be quantified, that's actually kind of cool. What this means is we can collect a bunch of did you like it, didn't you like it, and we can code it and give it numbers and we can turn it into quantitative, it allows us to graph it, that's really interesting. All right, discrete data. So discrete means that there are separation between the two items, right? So for example, down here we have three flowers or we have nine days highlighted. You cannot have a day and a half in this sort of account. You can't have three and a half flowers. You have a flower, a flower, a flower. There's no middle flower. So there's a separation between items. So you have a box, two boxes, three boxes, one package, two package and so forth. So discrete data, uh, it means that they're counting things, right? Like, so you're counting something. There's no, they're numbers, they're integers, there's no in-between. They're distinct and separate. And they're also digital. Digital is just a word that means on or off, like a digital, um, a digital clock. It is either the one second or the two seconds. It doesn't have to move in between the two. And the really easy way to know if something is a discrete data is, can it be counted? Is it a count or a tally. So do you have, so when you're counting up, say, packages or flowers, you're counting them. Um, the other alternative is when you're measuring the flowers, and that is not discrete data. So if we want to graph discrete data, um, there are many, many types of graphs we can use. Usually we'll use like a column chart or histogram. Now remember, a line graph is where we put the dots and we join the dots up. We don't do a line of best fit. So in these graphs, the name of what we're counting or the independent variable goes along the x-axis, and the count goes along the y-axis. Um, scatter plots, which are probably the most common graph we do in sciences, in high school at least, are not done with discrete data. So continuous data. Continuous data are where the values, so as long as we've got a set value, so between here and here, it can be anywhere along that line. Okay, um, So it exists on a spectrum, not clear, distinct values. So for example, temperature could be 27 degrees, 27.1, 27.2, 27.25, 27.255, 27 and it can go infinitely down as long as we can measure it, right? So data exists on a spectrum, not clear distinct values. Continuous data are analog. And the best example of that is the, the speedometer here. So our speed's in kilometers per hour, and it can be anywhere along this line. So it's an analog shift, right? Like we actually can see, if we've got enough resolution, the gap between 1 and 2, and then the gap between 1.5 and 2, and 1.5 and 1.75. You can see the gaps between always, like, and that's analog. And continuous data, and this is probably the best way to remember it, are measured. So if something is measured, um, it's going to be continuous. If something is counted, it's going to be discrete. Now, when we graph it, this is the most common, and you'll see this here. Um, here we have a scatter plot and a line of best fit. So we can use other types of graphs, but the scatter, scatter plot is our most common. Uh, and these graphs are where the plots are scattered according to their coordinates on the x, which is the independent variable, and then the y. So this one here, right? We'll go, we'll say on the x value, so its independent value is here, its independent variable, its dependent variable moves up to there, and we put that plot right there. And then we apply a line of best fit. Histograms, line graphs, and column charts are still possible, but you've got to put some artificial breaks in there to make them discrete. And yeah, so anyway, that's graphing continuous data, that's continuous and discrete data. I hope that made a lot of sense. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below and we'll get back to you as quick as we can. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye now.